Hey guys, welcome back to Cyberhack. And today we're going to be going over a quick cybersecurity roadmap and a couple other things because I found it to be really interesting and I want to share it with you guys. Get your thoughts on that because you're going to like this video and then you're going to comment below and tell me what you actually think about it. But before we continue with that, I was actually watching uh, Linus Tech Tip and all the controversy, whatever happened. So apparently, uh, and I, I don't know why I'm even sharing with this with you guys, but I was just watching it. So it was like fresh in my mind. I'm like, oh, that's really painful. This guy has like millions of subscribers and and uh, he's getting accused of sexual harassment and all the other stuff that is canceling his channel and they're pausing production. I don't know how that's even relevant to this, but uh, <laughs> but, um, you know, because maybe because, um, you know, it's, it's all about tech and, you know, uh, whatever anyway uh, i will be talking about this career development roadmap someone you know commented on my uh, one of my videos and they were like oh can you do a roadmap and honestly i was like no i'm not going to create a roadmap because there's so many out there already and it just makes sense to utilize one of those right and i'll go over the one that i found so so uh, useful in in this particular category and then of course we're going to go over a high overview of some of the positions that you can you know get a job in or a career in and uh, you know the average salary of course that fluctuates depending on what state you're in but we'll go over some of that stuff as well so before we continue uh let me just expand this before you guys see anything else oh i lost my i forgot to launch my stream deck but oh there you go okay um still launching the stream deck all right so if you do not know how to read this and it took me a little bit to figure it out like what the hell am i looking at uh unfortunately i don't think i can zoom in more than what this is uh can i i can't i cannot sorry about that all right let me just expand that again oh i can oh shoot wow i just learned something new um before i continue with this brief overview of how my day went at work oh, busy busy crazy busy lost internet connectivity someone didn't put in a change control and no one got blamed for it but you know what's interesting let me actually let me before i jump into this so at work someone didn't put in a change control made changes next morning i come in and i get in pretty damn early seven o'clock i'm in first user comes to me like i can't get internet right you kind of you, you're starting to wonder like why does internet have to do with me right because i'm the cybersecurity guy <clears throat> but apparently we manage the uh advanced firewall all right so you know all the content filtering all the web filtering stuff we, it fell into our category, not the networking team, not the firewall guys, but it fell into my lap. And the guy that usually manages uh, that, you know, is under me is on vacation. So obviously I take this. Anyway, long story short is there was no change request. Internet was lost because of something that was done on the night before that I was not aware of. And because of that, I come in, I start opening up tickets because I don't see anything that was different. What I should have done was check the audit logs of who made the last changes and at what time didn't think of it at the time went on and on couldn't figure it out i didn't look at the audit logs because i was like no one made any changes not that i was aware of so that's what happened uh, long story short always pro tip always if your company and organization does it make sure you put in a change request because you cover your ass that way make sure you always cover your ass very important anyway let's go over what we're going to be talking about today all right so bottom left corner right here let me open up my epic pen where is my epic pen all right bottom left corner very crucial that is your beginner stages and what does beginner stages mean beginner stages mean you're starting off into cybersecurity, and here are the current certifications if you're going this route right and right now this is oh uh, they cut off the names of each one of these well you see devops uh let's see if it actually comes back um and i know i'm like all over the place here see it cuts off you see cybersecurity analyst let me just erase all this so you guys don't 
So let me just go over right here. You can actually see it. Uh, cybersecurity analyst. Let me just download it. Maybe I can. Oh, I got to sign up with that. I don't want to sign up right now. All right. Cybersecurity analyst, cybersecurity architect, cybersecurity engineer. All right. Cybersecurity instructor. Oh, that's interesting. Cybersecurity manager. And then you got a project manager, so on, so forth. I'm not going to go through each one because you guys can now obviously read on your own. I don't know why when I zoom in, unless I didn't scroll up, maybe that's why. Oh, there it goes. Oh, okay. I scrolled all the way down. Sorry, guys. All right. Uh, that was foolish of me. Okay. So here we go. Here we go. Now we're on mark. I want to change this to a red. Okay. So if your entry level foundation, one to two year experience or no experience right here, experience level, practically none. So intermediate would be two to three advanced will be three to five. Honestly, I think advanced will require you more than three to five years and expert is five plus years. Yeah, okay. You could probably be very, um, very experienced within five years if you dedicate a lot of time, right? So let's just say you guys are here or here. Okay. I know some of you guys are here and some of you guys are actually saying that you just started and you're attending universities or courses and you're, you're getting familiar with the terms and this and that. This is your cybersecurity analyst. This, this whole section here is your cybersecurity analyst, which is pretty good, right? Because now it's guiding you towards something that's a little more every step of the way, more advanced in your training or certification or what they're recommending you to study. And this is the roadmap, guys. This is not anything very trivial. And you can see a lot of it's going to be overlapping depending even for the different categories up here. All right. I, I actually really like this, this diagram because it, it's so it, it's up to date. Right. And, and it has everything that you're looking to uh, that, that that's on the market as far as what you can take for our certifications. Right. So look at this one, DevOps, you got uh, Linux Plus, and you, then it goes to CSM, uh, G, GSSP. Now, I'm not familiar with these. Now, the CISSP, I, I am, but the CSSLP, uh, that's from ISC Squared. I'm not sure which I, I never look, I'm not going to look it up now, but you guys can do that. See, you see, like, there's a lot of overlapping stuff, but the MCSA, those are Microsoft stuff. AWS, Amazon, like I'm just jumping around. So I just wanted to show you guys this because this, I thought this was pretty awesome on what you can, which route you want to take, right? Because you, uh, a lot of you guys are, are looking at like cybersecurity analysts because that's like the step one, baby step, right? And which makes sense because it's on the first column and look, I mean, it, it's guiding you all the way up to be a ex experience cybersecurity analyst and then the consultant it's when you have to know more than the person hiring you and you you pretty much have to shock yourself sometimes because you know so much that even even you you found yourself like amazing okay <laughs> being a consultant uh because they get paid top dollars i'll be dead honest um you know pen testers um you know just uh consulting for a firm or a company to come in you're coming in as a consultant uh sitting with the group that actually does this day-to-day -day, uh, you know daily operational security stuff you have to educate them it's not them telling you what to do you have to tell them what to do and of course even for the lower end you know experience level for the certifications or the exams that you should take look they even include ccna here because you, you need ultimately if you're coming in as a consultant, you're not just coming in as a, you know, just governance and, you know, you're, you're doing networking, you're doing troubleshooting work as well on top of all that good stuff. All right. So I will share this with you. And another thing I wanted to kind of speak about briefly, and because these are all these different roles here, I wanted to go over this one. I thought this was a very nice laid out but it's a little dated, right? 2019 pre pandemic. All right. Um, the salary ranges has gone up since this has been released. I haven't found anything more relevant, but maybe, maybe something is this, this is from two, see, it says 2019. This is from a, one of those university, um, 
yeah, this is one of those university ones. But anyway, uh, chief information security officers. I do know personally, I do know people who are in this position making less than this in New York City. They are. I'm not lying. Uh, you would think this is the normal average. It is. But some organizations are not as big and fancy. And they could only offer up to where the uh, almost the level of what they would pay an engineer. Or the, and the CISO would probably make just a little bit more than that. Right? Because they're ultimately managing them. Uh, cryptographer. I don't know any cryptographers, to be honest. Um, do not know any of them. 144,000 chief security engineer. Now that's a new one. I haven't heard of that one before. I know security engineers. I know IT security engineers. Uh, I'm a IT security engineer, cybersecurity engineer, but not a chief security engineer. That's a new one to me. Cyber security analysts. Those are very, very, uh, there's a, usually there's a vast more majority of those individuals. Those are like the pawns of a chessboard for cybersecurity, the analysts, all right? Because you need a bunch of them to really analyze the data because it's just so much and the logs and all that. Cybersecurity manager, usually one per different groups. Uh, you know, you have your red team group, your blue team group, and there's a manager for each one of those. Uh, they're in the six-figure range. Uh, cybersecurity consultant. Um, I know of consultants that work for my organization, but they're not cybersecurity specific. So I don't I, I would say I don't know any cybersecurity specific consultants. I know IT consultants and networking consultants. And they deal with a lot with um even though some of them do deal with the firewalls and stuff. All right. Uh penetration and vulnerability testers. I we I don't have any in-house ones, but usually we outsource that to a consulting firm or a company, and they would come in, but they don't get paid salary. It, so this is my experience. They don't get paid salary. They get paid by the project of when they complete the you know pen test, whether it's a white hat or a black hat kind of a test. Network security engineer. Uh, this this falls into the category of myself, and I know a bunch of those as well. Uh, they definitely in New York make more than this. Well, again, this is 2019, so the numbers have changed a little bit. You know, there's, there's inflation now. Cybersecurity architect, they make a lot. They make a lot. They they design a lot of stuff. Uh, I personally know of them as well. And this is a little under. Again, this is 2019 numbers. Forensic expert. Now, I used to do this myself. I used to do um, forensics on data when I was working as a consultant. Um, and, you know, attorneys would hire a firm like where I was working as a consultant or, or a consultant company because it would be a third party outsourced and no affiliation to the the two the defendant and the person bringing the lawsuit. Uh, and we would just analyze all the data, so, you know, because people try to delete stuff and, and we try to retrieve all that to make sure that, you know, everything is um, presentable in, in court. Security software developer. I know a bunch of those too. Now this seems a little bit too low. Software is, is, is <laughs> that's a very low. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe a junior or maybe like you just started and you make this one. No way. It has to be. This is this this, this one is wrong. Any software developer is definitely making more than this. That's from my honest opinion. Security administrator. Now I'm not too sure what they mean in this regards. But if you're like a system, a uh, system, a security administrator, you're managing the firewalls, you're managing like the endpoint stuff and the managing the SIM, I would imagine this salary being a lot more than that. All right. So that's what I wanted to share. So, you know, this, this chart was definitely, I thought was a good stepping stone to what people should look into if they want to um, consider getting into one of these specific cybersecurity, uh, I guess, what do you call this? Um, what do you call this? Let's see, looking to upskill your knowledge and climb up the cybersecurity, confused by the industry certification landscape, trying to decide which one is right for you. I guess cybersecurity realm, uh, I don't know. Uh, the, the category, penetration tester, risk advisor, 
uh, these are the GRC stuff. Uh, this I was actually look. Oh, look, this this I was looking into the CRISC, uh, C risk. All right, uh, compliance risk and information system certification. I think that's what it was. And yeah, I thought that was pretty interesting. I, I want to now. Here's the thing, right? From from my experiences uh, with the C risk one and a risk advisors, you don't have to be technical, and there's no reason to be. Uh, even though down here they say like CompTIA Security Plus and all the other stuff, but it's more of foundational understanding of your governance and understanding of compliance, uh, which I have some experience with. But of course, you know, I always fall back into my primary technical expertise, right? So that's what I wanted to show you guys today. There's a lot of different aspects of where you can start off, and doesn't mean you you can you have to stick with it. If you decide to change because it's not working out for you or it's not what you're expecting it. Yeah. Again, like in this chart, let's just say you start as a cybersecurity analyst, you get to intermediate and you'd be like, Oh, you know what? I want to switch over to like a cybersecurity product, man uh, project manager or a pen tester or a forensic computer analyst. Nothing is stopping you from doing that. You just have to change course and understand what, this consists of what other you know aspects of cybersecurity consists of so you can actually you know be on edge and, and be on top of things right so you start researching and understanding it do you don't have to silo yourself into one particular area of expertise expand and grow your knowledge uh, you know absorb as much as you can and of course all of that once you do that if, if you do that if you decide not to stick with one or even if you do decide to stick with one and you become an experienced level you know five plus years going on 10 or whatever that's when the dollar size cup you know starts coming into you i guarantee because now when someone asks you a question during your interviews you can answer and the way you answer someone can tell who has the experience can tell but based on your experience level on how you deliver that answer to them, right? If you're new and you're just starting, you're not going to be able to deliver things because you're not going to be able to use examples. Um, and I, and I understand the hard part is you guys are like, well, I can't even get into that position to interview because I have no experience, right? You're always battling that. I have no experience. The way you can gain the experience is by reading and uh, you know, simulating as much as you can. That's that's your effort that you have to put into all this. All right. So there you go. There, there you go, guys. And again, I appreciate you. So please hit that like for the algorithm. Um, I'm hoping to grow this channel as much as I can. And uh, I will see you guys again really soon.